Hello, thank you for joining in. My name is Chrissy Hodges. I am an advocate for mental illness and stigma reduction, suicide prevention. Um, I'm going to do a live video today talking about 2016. It's over now. Happy New Year, and I hope you had a happy Christmas. Um, and then talking about what coming into the year 2017 and what that looks like and what does that look like for you. First, I just want to say thanks so much for everybody reaching out um, last month after my live video. It was so great to be able to connect with you. I just God, I love connecting with people who have these incredible stories of, you know, living and surviving mental illness and being able to reach out and, and connect with people and help show other people that you're not alone. I just love that. I love my people. Um, anyway, today I want to talk about 2016, 2017. What, what does it mean? How does it feel? Um, what about you? Um, when you're coming into a new year, I think that sometimes it can be uh, really tough because you start to think about the year before and we tend to focus on the negative. I think it's human beings. We want to look We want to look at things and go, oh my God, remember when that happened in June or remember when ha that happened here and I wish I'd done things different. And God, especially I think for us, people who live with mental illness, I feel like we do that even more so. I mean, we put ourselves under the scrutiny, you know, like a microscope of I wish I could be different or I wish things would be different. Um, and so I think it's really easy to focus on the negative. This is what I always say. I could have a, Hey Rudy, ah. <laughs> I could have a, um, I could have a dress and I find people could tell me that dress looks awesome. And one person could be like, that color looks awful on you. You look fat, you're ugly, whatever. And I would be like, I'm never wearing the dress again. I mean, why? Because the negative sometimes is so much easier to believe. And I'm going to tell you, when you have lived with a mental illness, we start scrutinizing ourselves. We start saturating ourselves in stigma. And I feel like all of a sudden we start focusing on that negative. I'm, I'm, I'm do, I do it too right here. I'm not saying everybody. I'm saying us. <laughs> like, I do it j as well. So when you look back on 2016, you may think to yourself, yeah, it was a good year, but look at that day that this happened and look at... Look at when I relapsed and, and look at, oh, my family had to deal with me again or whatever. This happened at work. This happened with friends. Well, I'm going to tell you something that I just discovered recently. Recovery doesn't happen in one day. It doesn't just happen because you're diagnosed and treated and, and, and maybe even because you're living and managing your symptoms. Recovery sometimes takes years and sometimes it takes these years, like 2016. You know, if you had times and you're like, God, that was painful, but where was the growth? Where are you now because of what you went through in 2016? One of the things that I've learned, especially I have OCD, I lived successfully with it, but for years it plagued me. And, and it plagued me in silence for 12 years in the time when my brain was developing. I was a teenager, I was a kid at the time. So, Having this powerful mental illness taught me how to adapt and manage these horrible symptoms. And that, adapta that adaptation saved my life. I mean, the way that I was able to manage the symptoms and relate to life and protect myself and to be able to say, you know, this is happening and I need to make sure that I'm okay in my mental illness and this and this and this. That was how I survived. And I'm going to tell you, I bet you're the same way. When you were living with an illness that was powerful and you didn't know how to manage it at times or you felt out of control, you don't even know you had an illness. How you adapted was how you survived. So when you're diagnosed and you're starting to move into recovery or you're starting to learn how to recover, how do you think that you're going to be able to just all of a sudden be like, oh, I don't have to do that anymore. No way. This is how we survived. Recovery takes a long time. It's not just going to take one year. It's not just going to take a couple times. In all actuality, recovery has five stages. I didn't know this until I became a peer support. Uh, a peer support. And then all of a sudden, I was able to look at the timeline of my life when I was going through recovery. The first stage is impact of illness. 
Impact of illness is when you're diagnosed and all the feelings that go along with that. The, oh my God, what am I going to do now? For me, it was relief at first, but then I was like, oh my God, I can't trust my brain. My brain's been lying to me for 12 years. I, this really isn't true. I was terrified. And then I was very angry. So however you reacted in impact of illness, I'm guessing it was probably trauma. Now you're mentally ill. Now you're one of those people. For me, I was like, I'm one of those scary people. I've learned now that like, people who are mentally ill are like the greatest people ever. I love them. Um, <laughs> us, you know, we're, we all are. Um, I quickly moved out of that to the next phase, which is life is limited. Life is limited lasted for 13 years for me. This is that stage in the recovery where, damn, you just got to get through all the emotions, the anger, the sadness, the guilt, the grieving, the nobody's going to love me. My, what does my family think about me now? Who's going to hire me? You know, all of that stuff, all of that stuff. It is a really difficult stage. Stay in it as long as you need to, to work through it. Um, for me, I, it was 13 years. And you know what? I had this normal life to the outside world. Everybody was like, oh, there's nothing wrong with her. I kept my illness a secret. I kept my suicide a secret, everything. But I was so mad inside. And I had many times where I just wish that I didn't have to deal with this stupid disorder. I wish I didn't have to be one of those mentally ill people. And then finally, I came to the third stage, which is change is possible. This is when you get a little flame of hope. For that, for me, that change was, I relapsed really bad in 2011. Very bad. Like, wondering if I needed to be hospitalized again, um, which would have been fine. Um, but I was really scared. And that's when I thought, what do I want to do here? Do I want to stay angry and hating myself and hating how I learned to survive this illness and keep telling myself that the way that I react to the world is wrong? No. I'm going to learn how to like myself. That was the first step. Loving myself. That's a way different story. But I'm going to learn to like who I am. I'm going to learn to understand that who I am doesn't start somewhere when OCD ends and OCD doesn't begin where I, you know, or doesn't end where I begin. That because of what I've been through, that's who I am. And I thought, you know what I want to do? I want to help people. I don't want people to go through this alone anymore. So I went on the OCD website. I, found, I saw Jeff Bell on there. He's speaking, you know, he's like a, he was, he's a, um, a spokesperson for the IOCDF. And I was like, if he can do it, I can do it too. My, I have sexual and violent intrusive thoughts. It's called pure, o, pure OCD. And so I was scared. I was like, oh my God, what if no one believes me? What if they think I'm stupid? You know, what if my OCD is sitting there like, girl, you better not say anything. Um, and then I was like, I don't care. I'm going to do something because I don't want to live ashamed and embarrassed and guilt anymore. And then I moved into the next stage, commitment to change. And this is where you have to take that step. So I went and found Toastmasters and I was like, I'm going to go in there. I was terrified. And it, it, I was like, at some point I'm going to stand up and I'm going to learn to speak about OCD. And I was like, maybe that'll be a year out. I hope. <laughs> and I, so that was my commitment. I'm going to commit to finding the outlet to learn to speak about it. So I did that. And then the next step was actions for change. I went to a Toastmasters meeting. I met people. I signed up to do a speech. I stood up, cried the whole time, <laughs> bawled through the whole speech about OCD. And afterwards, people, you know, luckily they didn't critique the speech because it was pretty bad. But they came up after and they said, oh my gosh, I have depression you know, my, my, my sister has bipolar. My so-and-so has this. I've experienced this. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh my God, I'm not alone. Because recovery feels so lonely sometimes, doesn't it? There's so much more than just symptoms. There's shame. There's guilt. There's 
anger, there's everything, and you feel wrong for having them. I want to tell you right now, because I don't think I knew this then, you have permission. Give yourself permission to be mad, to be sad, to feel guilty, to think all these things like, maybe I'll never have the life that I wanted before the illness. But you know what? That doesn't mean you can't have the life you want now. Just because you have a mental illness doesn't mean things have to stop. You're the same person you were before. And you can be better. So for 2017, moving forward, I'm going to have those hiccups. You're going to have those hiccups. We're going to have those days where we think, oh my gosh, here we go again, or I'm reacting this way, or I'm this way. It's part of the process. It's part of getting well, getting better. And remember, everything you went through to survive your illness up till now, that isn't something you have to feel ashamed of. Feel proud. You're still here. Symptoms can be really shameful. For me, they're super shameful. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like if my family knew this, my friends knew this, if everybody knew this, they think I'm a horrible person. Or Who cares? I know that's easier said than done. Trust me. This is your journey. This is your life. And I'm telling you, there are so many of us out there. I'm seeing like all the emojis coming across. So I know I'm not alone. I mean, you know, I know there's a few of you out there at least <laughs> that I'm talking about. This is your recovery. Be in whatever stage you need to be in for as long as you need to be in it. Just so you can get out on the other side and you can go, I am better because of this disorder. I am better because of what I went through. I have more empathy. I'm more compassionate. I'm a better human being because I'm going to tell you the biggest gift I have gotten out of my illness is my ability to relate to people like you and to share my experience and not feel alone and know that if I share mine that you don't feel alone either. So in 2017, I was, like years are always so daunting. I'm like, but then they go quicker, like the older we get, right? Um, where are you in your recovery? Where are you? Recovery is fluid. You go in and out of it. Sometimes I go back to the life is limited stage. But I also know I've been there before. I can do it again. Where are you? And are you loving yourself no matter where you are? Because I'm going to tell you this. Whatever place you're in right now, you deserve love. You are worth it. You are a good person. And you can survive this. You know how I know? Because I'm going to be right there with you. Every single month, the first Tuesday of every month, 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, you and I are going to be here together. And we're going to talk about this stuff. And when you need to pick me up, when I need to pick me up, <laughs> I'm coming to you. And I hope that when you tune in here, you can know that you aren't alone. You deserve recovery. And even if there are moments in 2017 coming up that might be tough for you, the same that were in 2016, maybe you can think this. This is part of my journey of recovery. And this is going to make me an incredible human being. I know I already am one, but this is going to make me even better. Mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. And it's nothing to feel guilty about. And if you ever think it is, reach out. Reach out to people who are advocates. And we'll help you find that place again. And I'm probably going to reach out to you too because I need it every once in a while as well. But I'm going to be here every month with you. And we're going to get through 2017. And it's going to be a great year. And in a year from now, we're going to be sitting here talking about, about all the wonderful things that we did. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next month, and I hope that your January is wonderful. It's, I'm in Denver, and it's freezing cold here, and I love it. Um, so I hope you're enjoying wherever you are, and I look forward to seeing you in a month. Bye now.